welcome to breakfast. Today we are making my current fave because we know I go through phases, lemon blueberry single serve high protein muffin. This is actually a single serve of a recipe that I've shared on here before. I did share the single serve version though on my Instagram and TikTok, so I'll put that on screen if you wanna check it out. But I have convinced myself that the single serve version tastes better than the full batch. I don't know, I grew up as a big eater, maybe this is that manifesting into adulthood. But today I'm taking you through a full day of eating as a distance runner because I finally feel confident with that label, with calling myself a runner. I have been seen, fueling, and treating my body like an athlete, and it feels good. So I'm gonna take you through a full day of what I eat, but first. So today we have got a sprint workout, which is exciting because I recently started a new running plan. I haven't done like a full out sprint workout in a while, but if you've been keeping up with my running journey, you will know that I've run on and off for the past few years, really only getting more seriously into running and like following a plan this past year. Last year, I started a half marathon training plan because I was feeling really gung ho, really good about my running. I wanted to set a big goal, but long story short, I ran too far, too fast. I got shin splints and it felt like no matter what I did, they would not go away. So I got a little sideline this past summer, mainly did like the spin bike and jump rope. Now though, I am fully recovered, I'm feeling good, so I've committed to a new plan, a plan that I think is gonna be more realistic for me, that focuses on less miles, but more of building like a speed base, doing speed workouts, interval workouts, which I think is gonna be really beneficial as this is where most elite athletes started as a teen, building that base of faster running at shorter distances, rather than jumping into like the half marathon or the full marathon that so many adults do. So really excited about that. The big mental cue or focus I've had at this stage of my training has been on cadence or foot speed. So how many times my feet are hitting the ground per minute while I'm running, which a huge eye opener for me was that foot speed does not necessarily translate to linear or forward running speed, AKA you can have your feet moving really fast even at slower running speeds, which is actually beneficial from a form and injury prevention standpoint. It helps you run more efficiently. It helps you position your body in a better way. There's basically a lot of benefits to running with a higher cadence. So I've been focusing on that on my easy runs. I guess the goal of today's sprint workout is to see if I can translate that better foot speed and better running form to a faster workout. We'll see. I'm hoping to bring little Riker with me. There he is. We're on a rock. We're on a walk right now. I'm hoping to bring him with me today because he hasn't been with me on many of my training runs. It's just been too hot and I really wanted to focus on my form. So hoping to bring him, we'll see. Welcome to my pre-run snack and my pantry. We are having some caramel corn rice cakes, which if you've ever been a gym bro, you know. I feel like the running joke with peanut butter is that everybody underestimates, overestimates the size of a tablespoon. Today, I am literally trying to use as little peanut butter as possible. I'm just like scraping it on so we can get the flavor of the peanut butter, but without like all the fat that I know is going to immediately upset my stomach. We have also got the weirdest weather today. I always try to film these videos on sunny days because everybody prefers a good sunny day. And the forecast said clear and sunny, no chance of rain, no clouds. Already I see those big suspicious storm clouds moving in. As you can see, we go very generous with the jam because jam has no drama. It's a simple carb, it digests quick, It's Readily available energy. Mmm, that combo right there. I also heated up some water for a little coffee. Today I am sipping on golden ratio in golden milk flavor. This coffee comes in a bag. I'm gonna explain it in a sec, but I just gotta show you. Like, look at that. Oh my gosh. Golden ratio is a low acidity coffee. So if you've ever heard of dark roast, medium roast, light roast, blonde roast, like all these different roasts, that basically describes the temperature at which and how long coffee beans are roasted for. So golden ratio roasts their beans at low temperature 
temperatures so that you're getting just as much caffeine but with five times less acidity as compared to regular black coffee. Now, caffeine can be great pre-workout, pre-run, especially if you're an endurance athlete. This is going to help reduce fatigue. However, the acidity in regular coffee can act as an irritant on your stomach and digestive tract. Pair that with an activity like running or if you're doing higher impact exercise, you're already like jostling your insides around. That's not a great combo. That can lead to acid reflux and upset stomach. Things moving a little bit more quickly than you would like through your digestive system, which makes it difficult to bring the intensity, bring the energy, feel good with your training. As you can see with how I've structured this entire meal, I'm designing this for digestibility so that I can get this energy and bring the intensity to my training. So this is what it looks like once it's fully steeped. Again, not as dark as a dark roast or more traditional coffee. It's that beautiful golden color, almost looks like and kind of drinks like a tea. Each pouch of golden ratio is made with all natural ingredients. It is vegan, paleo, keto, as well as low FODMAP friendly. So if you struggle with acid reflux, you have a sensitive gut, maybe IBS, or you just want a gentler alternative to your usual coffee so you can bring the intensity with your running or like whatever activity, I will put a link to check out golden ratio in the description box down below. The easiest way to think about it is like regular coffee minus the acidity, just as much caffeine, but no upset tummy. I so appreciate them partnering with me on today's video. They have been kind enough to offer our community 15% off your next order. So all of that will be down below. For now, I'm gonna dig into this and I will check in with you when it's time for a run. So we have had a bit of weather today. It rained, it is currently misting, fogging, the joys of living in Canada. You can experience all four seasons in one day. But I did commit to doing my run outside. We're gonna get muddy, we're gonna get dirty. I don't care because I am just so excited. I ordered a new harness, finally committed to getting a proper waist joring harness to run with Riker. Um, it arrived early. I, I'm just like, I, I can't get over it. It's such high quality. It's even better than I could have imagined. What's special about this harness is that as compared to the bungee leash setup you've seen me use before that like just secures around my waist and then it just kind of pulls him from like whatever angle this is a better fit for Riker this is gonna be better for him long term for running but also this is not gonna move around on me the other harness you might have noticed in my videos was always sliding up and down my lower back which sometimes gave me back pain sometimes affected my running form made it not the best because this secures around the thighs this isn't gonna move up and down on me it's gonna give me a nice smooth pull from the hips which is what we want with running especially for sprint type exercises so we're gonna get warmed up we're gonna get right out. we're gonna get going here is talking about you hey bud I know you're wearing your new harness you untied here all right jump out <laughs> an angle that feels natural to film from in the car. I don't know how I settled on this diagonal angle. I just can't stand looking right at the camera like being, you know, it just, it feels, it feels weird to me. It might just be me. It might just be, I'm in a silly goofy mood today, but <laughs> Run is done. Jeff took Riker inside because he was a little mud boy. He needed to get cleaned up. He needed to get a drink of water. But our run went pretty well considering it was Riker's first time in this harness, which obviously it's going to feel different for him. But one thing that I did not fully anticipate and I realized very quickly on the run is that before, before I started running with Riker, I did walk training with him first. We did general training to make sure he could focus on me. He understood basic commands. And one of the big focuses in walk training was making sure that he could keep a loose leash, could listen to me, could refocus on me when he got distracted and was not always pulling me all over the place, right? So 
With this new leash or harness setup, this is a pull harness. The idea is that the dog should actually be pulling out at the end of the line all the way in front of you so that the line is taut, which goes exactly against what we spent so long training him. So I tried to encourage him on today's run. I was like, let's go, let's go, clapping, telling him to pick up the pace and pointing ahead our usual commands for speeding up. But every time that he reached the end of the line, he felt that like little pull of the line being taut he looked back at me like he was doing something wrong and he ran right back trying to come beside me so I think it's just going to take a little bit more time for him to adjust a lot of reinforcement reminding him like okay this is your running harness this is your walking harness I'm still going to keep the um more chest oriented harness for our walk since he doesn't pull on that it's it's perfectly fine for walking this one will be for running so he just gets used to when we put this on I'm at the end of the line when I put this on I'm staying beside I'm on a loose leash until then though a fun little fact or like beneficial side effect of doing this is that there is some scientific basis for how doing these resisted pulls with Riker can actually benefit my running. So when I was doing my PES certification earlier this year, performance enhancement specialist, I did it because I wanted to learn more about athletic training. I wanted to help train people who wanted to become more athletic. When I was doing that, one of the drills that we learned about for improving your linear speed, like your ability to move fast in one direction, like sprinting, all that jazz. One of the drills we learned about or over speed drills. So you could either do this by running downhill on like a downward grade. You could do this by having somebody, uh, an animal, something else pulling you forward with a harness while you're running as fast as you can. And the idea is that by including these other elements, they are forcing you to run at a speed to have a foot turnover faster than what is natural for you, which like what we were talking about earlier, a big focus for me right now in my training is improving my cadence, is in improving my foot speed, my turnover, the rate at which my feet are moving while I'm running. So Riker, my little pal, once he gets used to this and he can actually pull properly, he may actually help me become a faster runner. All right, post-workout snack. I am not often hungry after running. For a while, when I first got into running longer distances or running at higher intensities, I got really, really bad nausea, which I later learned, I think, was caused by dehydration. But the main thing that I crave post-run is just like fruit or drinks or really just hydrating. But as I've learned, if I don't get calories in, even if I'm not hungry, I get hangry later and then I eat like the entire kitchen. So we are making a point of getting some some food, getting some fuel, some carbs, some protein, all that, maybe a little bit of greens too in the system. Today we're gonna make a mint chocolate chip protein shake. I had some greens that were going wilty in the fridge. Hear me out, okay, I promise it's good. You don't have to like greens to love this recipe, but I had these mint leaves that were going wilty, so we're gonna use some of those. We're gonna use some baby spinach. We're gonna combine that with this vegan protein from Women's Fast I've been loving, because it doesn't bloat me or upset my stomach. So I'll put a code down below if you wanna save 20% off that. Some almond milk, some ice that I don't have out yet. This yogurt that I don't know why I bought the 30% less sugar. We really need the sugar post-workout, as well as some mini chocolate chips. Time, Jeff. It is your time to shine with making me my special eggs. I like this outfit. Well, I'm already on camera. You can't just put your hands in front of my face. <laughs> What is up? So Jeff is currently making me my special eggs, which all that means is that he is making me soft boiled eggs because every time I try to make hard boiled eggs, I follow the instructions online. Every time I overcook them, I either undercook or I overcook or I undercook and I try to keep cooking and then they end up overcooked. So he's currently making me my special eggs because the uncramping effects of my run have worn off. I am currently on that time of month and it's just like, I feel like every period, I go in with a great attitude. No, you don't. <laughs> okay, I don't always go in with a great attitude. I'm never looking forward to it, but there are always like one or two days of the period, usually toward the end for me, where it is just Armageddon up in there and we are going through that today. I'm not feeling good. I am incredibly bloated. The lower portion of my stomach does not feel great, but we gotta keep eating, we gotta keep 
fuel in and I do I do love a good soft boiled egg. So we're gonna make some of these. We're gonna throw together a little snack. I'm not completely sure what I'm gonna have, but it'll be tasty. It's now the time. Breaker, DC, is now the time. Simply too much. Simply too much. Sir, you are having a good nap. <laughs> Come on, let go. In the fridge, we are currently trying to figure out what I would like to eat with hard boiled eggs. This is one of the really fun parts about stopping counting calories and listening to your hunger and fullness cues, but then also realizing that there are digestive cues that don't always align with where maybe your hunger or nutritional needs should be, because right now I don't wanna eat. I really thought my hunger would come up after that run. I don't feel it, my stomach's upset. I am so bloated, I'm not really hungry, but I know I realistically should eat. So got this peanut sauce I made. I don't think that really goes with eggs. I do have some roasted chickpeas and mixed beans. This has been, I don't wanna say it's a phase. A few months from now, I think we're gonna look back on this video and say that was a phase, but right now I am just into roasted beans. I go through like a can of beans every day. I mean, is beans and eggs a weird snack? That's it. <laughs> I could make a salad. I'm loving my idea for a salad. So I settled on a salad, my classic Thai crunch cabbage salad that I've shared in a few videos now. I shared the full recipe a couple of videos back. I always try to bring you guys new recipes, but at the same time, I don't want to be unrealistic with what I'm eating. You know I go through phases. You know that there are meals that I just like attach to that are like comfort foods for me and this, lately has been the move. It's crunchy, it's got texture. We've got our fancy special soft boiled eggs that Jeff absolutely nailed today. So I'm gonna dig into this. I have got a heck ton of work to do today to catch up on it from this morning. So gonna dig in, gonna do some work, and I'll check in with you. day but tonight for dinner we are making the viral tiktok pasta i don't know if there's another name for this if there is let me know it's basically where you take a soft cheese you put it at the center of a baking dish and then you surround it with like olive oil and i added a bit of pesto today but also cherry tomatoes and you bake that and you add the pasta and you like bake it all together it's really good we've made this a bunch of times over the past couple months and kind of modified it along the way to make it a little bit higher protein, add a little bit more veggie, elevate the nutrition because I really feel like dinner time for Jeff and I is kind of our catch up meal in terms of calories and energy and nutrients because during the day it just gets so busy plus trying to eat around runs without like disrupting my digestion and making sure everything's feeling good this is just when i try to cram basically anything that i might have missed out on eating during the day into one meal this is a great way to do it so i'm gonna link the recipe down below but for now let's get to it So like any good casserole, this looks disgusting in the bowl, but I promise it smells so good. It's gonna be so tasty, so we're gonna dig on it. up editing for this video but I have to show you this poor little boy is so tired from his big old run that he can't 
cannot even right now. Anyways, before we wrap up, I wanted to share one more idea, one more thought related to what we've been talking about today. And it goes back to this like tweet or meme that I saw a while ago on Instagram that basically said, training for performance can improve your appearance, but rarely will training for appearance improve your performance. And at first glance, I didn't really think much of it. I'm like, okay, who cares? Like I've trained for appearance before now I'm training for performance, whatever. I don't care if it changes my appearance. But I realized that's kind of easy to say as someone who has already reached my weight loss goal, you know, I, if I could maintain this body, you know, in and around here forever, I would be happy. I'm not actively trying to change my body at this point. And so it's very easy for me to step into that mindset of saying, who cares what happens? I'm going to train to get fast. I'm going to train to become a better runner, whatever, whatever. That's kind of interesting because it reminded me of a piece of feedback I got when I used to compete in bodybuilding. And whenever I share stories from my time in bodybuilding, I always feel the need to make the disclaimer of I loved bodybuilding. I had such an overwhelmingly positive experience in that community. It was an era of my fitness journey. I learned so much about my body, so much about we do not need to lick our butthole right now. Bodybuilding was an era of my fitness journey. I learned so much about my body, so much about how I wanted to approach this whole fitness thing. But the feedback I got from a judge was that, okay, next show, let's aim for a longer and leaner look. Your legs should come in slimmer. They should be defined. They should have less size, less bulk. Think kind of like a track athlete. And it made enough sense to me, but I couldn't help think if you want me to look like a track athlete, why am I training like a bodybuilder? Not to mention when I step on stage and I'm supposed to look like the pinnacle of fitness, like this track athlete that you want me to look like, isn't it a little funny that I am water depleted, that I am exhausted, that I am hungry, that I am by no means at my peak performance? I feel like I'm rambling. So bringing this back to why training for appearance will rarely improve your performance is because the way most people go about improving their appearance is by working to have more muscle and less body fat. So they're training for hypertrophy, muscle growth, which doesn't always correlate with improving strength, improving power, or improving really any metric of athleticism or being able to do more with your body beyond just like looking a certain way. In order to reduce body fat, you have to be at a calorie deficit. Living life at a calorie deficit, that is not a life, right? A, a diet is not a lifestyle. It's not something that you're supposed to do long-term. When you're at a calorie deficit, that is an energy deficit. Do you understand what that means, right? A deficit means you don't have enough energy. When you spend an extended period of time without enough energy, it starts to trickle over into other areas of your life. So yes, you may be losing body fat. You may be maintaining a very lean physique year round, but where are you pulling energy from? Where are you pulling enjoyment from in your life? Which I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. Like I just want you to be able to live life to its fullest as you see fit. But the reason that I think performance as the first and foremost goal is so encouraging is because it helps you enjoy the process on your way to the next milestone or the next goal, right? Whereas when you're training for appearance, it's like the only thing that kind of matters is like that end goal of, oh, I'm gonna get a six pack or, oh, I'm gonna get my waist to however many inches, I'm gonna hit this number on the scale. There's always that end goal. And sure, you might be able to celebrate like little visual wins along the way. It's so surface level. And once you reach that goal, there isn't always an obvious next step. One of the big things that I did struggle with when I was in bodybuilding coming out of a competition season was, okay, well, I have the six pack. I have the muscle definition. I, I look fantastic by every metric. And now we just do it again, which again, no shade. If that's your goal and if you find fulfillment and if you enjoy that, go for it, right? There was a point in my fitness journey where that was super fulfilling. I was just so curious to see how much muscle I could build and see how my body responded from a muscle standpoint to different training techniques. But if you feel like you have reached the end of the line with that and you're not finding motivation from that anymore, that could even be discouraging for you. I highly encourage you to look into setting performance goals. I have found them so encouraging. It's been such a positive mental shift for me. I feel so much more capable in my body, not to mention you can still work toward, you know, whatever it is. If you want to look a different way, if you want to get that long and lean track athlete look, that will happen over time, right? It's specific adaptation to impose demand. My body will probably over time change in its appearance as I keep running and I'm okay with that, but I'm in no rush to get there because I'm enjoying the journey. So I am curious as always, if you are training for performance, if you are training for appearance, let me know in the comments down below if you're thinking of switching it up. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.